Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to do something very different from what I normally do for, for HOC videos. Uh, we're going to take a look at sort of a parts list I threw together, because the thing is, I get a lot of people like asking me questions like, Hey Buildzoid, what, what's a good motherboard for this CPU? And, and I... I can't give them a recommendation because it's like, I don't know what you're doing with the rest of your build. So it's like, I don't know, do you, how many like USB ports do you need? How many memory slots do you need? Do you care about like, would you care about a specific form factor? It's just like, you know, I, I don't know what you're going for with the build. So I find it really hard to make motherboard recommendations uh, to people. And so I just decided I'm just going to throw together a sub $1,000 uh, gaming system to sort of, I don't know, like give my thoughts on how I would build a gaming PC and th then you can maybe like derive off of that like your own thing so um yeah and, and here's the build I threw together um for under a thousand dollars so I went with a Ryzen 5 3600 and the reasoning for why I went with a Ryzen 5 3600 is basically this right here so this is from hardware unboxed because we all know I don't test games uh, I also don't have a 3600 or a 3900X, but the idea here is that basically we can clearly see that the Ryzen 5 3600 is basically just as fast as like a 3900X, and that's uh, considering the, f like, and the 3600 has a pretty significant, like, core clock speed disadvantage, so if we overclock the 3600 manually, we should have no problem, like, catching up to the 3900X, and actually there's, like, m more than that even... Uh, I opted in for a very overclockable kit of memory. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of the thing is just like, you know, 30, like in my opinion, the, the Ryzen 5 3600 with a, you know, cost, like proper cooling system and a good set of memory is probably the CPU to get until you have enough budget to buy like a 9700K or a 9900K because you're not gonna, you're really not gonna see much benefit from going with a, like, a more expensive CPU than that until you're at, like, a 2080 Ti or something, right? Like, the 2070 Super, it's, like, that's, what, four FPS difference right there, and then to the 9900K, it's, uh, it's, like, uh, 14 FPS difference, but that's with a bone stock 3600, and, well, admittedly, you can overclock a 9900K, but, you know, it's, like, twice, two, it's more than twice the price, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of why I went with the, the 3600. And honestly, I would just stick with the 3600 for gaming builds. Like, I would literally, up until you're looking at, like, a 2080 or a 2080 Ti, I would not buy a different CPU because it just doesn't make any sense. You're, you're paying a lot more money for not much performance gain as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, especially if you actually, like, overclock the 3600 and pair it with a kit of memory that overclocks properly. And... The thing to watch for, for here with the memory kit is this is a uh, AES part number kit from, from Crucial. And basically what that AES part number tells us, at least as of right now, kits with that, that uh, like, like those three letters in the part number, um, like that, um, those are Micron Revision E. So, you know, I tested a, like, I have four sticks of this, like this memory, um, not this exact skew, but similar spec, similar, like, similar part number, similar spec, uh, similar everything. Um, actually, identical spec, similar part number. And all four of the sticks can do at least, like, 4,400 megahertz. <laughs> so there is no point spending more money on memory unless you're looking at actual BDI uh, from Samsung. Because something like Hynix CJR just doesn't really like CJR is in between Rev E and BDI, but it's just like you can get really cheap Rev E and then overclock it to like CJR speeds, no problem. And then BDI is just like a level above everything else. So that's kind of that. As far as I'm concerned, like you, you should just sort of go for this, and all the other memory kits are just pointless because you can overclock this so much. And I'm not aware of any other manual. Like the the reason why this is very specifically a Crucial kit is because Crucial is a uh, owned by Micron, and Crucial basically it uses only Micron and Samsung memory ICs. I've never seen a Crucial kit with Hynix. Um, they do sometimes use uh, Samsung. Um, but yeah, here, like, this is basically guaranteed Micron Revision E. Revision E is great. This is really cheap. Why would you buy anything else, right? That's kind of the logic there. For the heatsink, um, I just went with this one. And the reason why I went with this one, because at around 30 to $35, it's basically all a bunch of Hyper 212 Evo knockoffs. And it's just like, this is bigger and better. 
Um, so yeah, this is actually probably extremely overkill for a 3600. But, um, you know, if we like, you could drop the cooler and maybe get like a 5700 XT, except I don't really see the point of going out and buying a 5700 XT when if you buy a 5700, you can actually overclock a 5700 to 5700 XT speeds, uh, either by flashing a 5700 XT BIOS or uh, running custom power play tables because the RX 5700, like the main difference between the XT and the non-XT is just the power limit and the clock speeds. So... It doesn't make sense to me to pay extra for a GPU that's basically a software upgrade, right? Like, who cares? Like, spend less money on the graphics card. Um, and this basically, like, so, you know, we're, we're basically, like, the, the idea here is basically to push the 3600 to either, like, stock 3900X performance levels or in excess of that, which should be possible, Um if you like manually configure all the memory timings and everything. And I'm assuming the CPU will hit like 4 to 4.1 gigahertz all core. Um, so that should totally be viable, especially with a heatsink like this. Um, the other thing is Ryzen does actually scale stability-wise with uh, temperature. So that's kind of like the the massive heatsink actually kind of gives us a bit of an advantage there. Is just like the fact that it'll it's going to run cooler is, is going to help us. Um, for the motherboard, I went with the MSI B450A uh, A Pro. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, this has a BIOS flashback button right there. And it has a decent number of USB ports. The VRM heat sinks look solid. The VRM under it, I'm not sure. Um, but we are running a 3600, so it really it doesn't put that much strain on the vCore VRM in the first place. And it's just like, so, you know, for the price, I think this is a pretty solid motherboard. So that's why I went with that one instead of a different one. Um, cause the other options, cause in this price range, as far as I'm concerned, your options are basically MSI or Asus because both, uh, ASRock and, uh, Gigabyte use a intercell voltage controller, which is really ob obnoxious to actually like work with. Um, and it's like, like the MSI and the Asus boards, just, if you're going to be overclocking, the experience is going to be much, much better. Um, than if you're on a, a, a like an Asus or a, I mean, a ASRock or a Gigabyte board because of that voltage controller difference. So, yeah, that, that's why I went for this board instead of something else. Because the thing is, like, you might be like, oh, but why didn't you go for an Asus board? Well, the Asus boards at this price point don't have BIOS flashback. They tend to have less USB ports. They tend to have worse VRM heat sinks. The VRMs themselves are, I think, in roughly the same quality range. But it's just like, nah, J just, just go for the MSI. Um, so, yeah, and ultimately... You know, like basically what I'm, I'm thinking this would hit as a configuration is, you know, 4 to 4.1 gigahertz on the CPU. Um, may, well, maybe 4.2. I'm not sure. Maybe 4.15, right? So somewhere slightly above 4 gigahertz on the CPU. Uh, 3600 to 3800 on the memory. That is absolutely no problem for these memory kits. Like up to 3800 is definitely possible. For timings, you'd probably be looking at something between like cast latency 14 to 16, somewhere in between, depending on, you know, the CPU, was memory controller, the motherboard, the everything, like the, the memory kit itself. Um, TRCD, you'd be looking at somewhere between like 19 and 21. TRP, I don't remember what these mistakes do for TRP. I think it's going to be around 18 to 20. Um, TR, uh, TRAS, you're probably going to be looking at low, maybe like 28. Um, TRFC and TRC, like TRFC are probably going to be looking at around 500, which is not that great, but it's still better than like auto timings for a 3800 memory, uh, 3800 megahertz memory kit. And, uh, TRC probably around like 60, um, which is just a restriction of the mi Micron, um, uh, revision E, T4, 16, TRDS and L4, both can do four on these, uh, what else is there? TWR, probably 10 or 12. Uh, and I, that, that's like all the timings I can remember off the top of my head. So basically, you can definitely tighten up all of the timings way below what you can normally run at stock. For storage, one terabyte SSD from Crucial. Um, the reviews for this thing make it look pretty solid and it's cheap, right? Um, and I don't really see, like, I guess you could go for like a 256 SSD and it's one terabyte hard drive. But in my opinion, like ultimately that would cost the same. And you'd end up in this awkward situation where if where if you have like really big games or something, they're going to end up on the hard drive and like, yeah, sure, your computer boots fast, but you want to open anything and it's going to take forever, right? Especially like if you're opening a big, like a big uh, game, 
it's going to load forever. So in my opinion, it's just better to have all of the storage at that point as an SSD, right? Like if, so yeah, one terabyte crucial hard drive, um, 5,700 pulse because it doesn't have the terrible stock blower heat sink. So this will actually overclock properly and stay quiet. Um, and that, that's kind of the justification for why I went with this. Um, so yeah, definitely a solid card right here. And then we have this uh, case because the reviews seem to indicate that this is halfway decent. So it's just like, well, it's a box. I'm really not one for spending a lot of money on steel boxes. Um, I do not believe in, you know, value of having expensive steel boxes. So yeah, um, I, I'm really... Like, you know, th this has a mesh front, so good airflow, uh, good airflow intake. You, it comes with two fans. Um, yeah, should do a solid job, right? And then actually, since you do have a tower heatsink, that's actually going to force air out the rear exhaust on its own. So, yeah, that's that's kind of why I'll, uh, you know, like, and it's cheap. Like, this is the, the first sort of 50-ish dollar case that I was like, oh, yeah, this looks decent. So that's why I went with the, the Focus. And then for the power supply, I went with this thing. And the reason I went with this power supply is because this was the only modern 500... Well, I couldn't find a review for this specific model, but I could find a review for the 650 watt version. This is one thing that really annoys me with choosing like power supplies for like reasonable builds is most people really overestimate how much power they need. So we have a 5700 in here, we have a 3600, we are going to overclock both of those things. A 550 watt power supply ha should have no issues uh, handling that. The big problem is Finding 550 watt power supply reviews is really hard. For whatever reason, the PSU manufacturers always ship out like 750 watt units. And in my opinion, especially 750 watts is just a power supply size that doesn't make any sense because it's not quite big enough to run like an SLI system um, with 2080 Ti's because SLI on anything less than that is stupid. Um, and it's not like, and it's too big for single GPU setups, unless you're running like a 18 core, uh, you know, unless you're running like an X299 CPU with a ridiculous overclock, in which case, like, at that point, you're probably not very cost sensitive anyway. So, yeah, it's just like, okay, well, fine. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the thing. And the, the other issue with that is, is the PSU manufacturers, just because the PSUs are sort of from the same series doesn't necessarily mean they have the exact same internals. So you might find that like a 550 watt model is significantly worse than the 850 watt model in the same series, which is like, okay, uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to deal with that. So I went with this thing because at least for this thing, I found a 650 watt review, which I'm assuming... Like, I'm hoping is close enough to what this actually is internally. Um, but again, I'm not sure. But this was like the only modern 550 watt PSU I could actually, well, you know, well, this size PSU that I could find a review for. And uh, yeah, so I, I really, I'm, I'm really not impressed with the, the so like the selection I had to make with the power supply. But uh, yeah. Because the thing is, if a power supply, if I can't find a review for a PSU, I just act like it doesn't exist. Because if, like, because the thing is, if you buy a power supply and it's bad, you won't know it's bad until it's killed something. So I don't buy PSUs where I can't find a review from, like, Johnny Guru, Tech Power Up, or Tom's Hardware, because the guy who does... Like, the guy who did PSU reviews for Tech Power Up for ages, he also does power supply reviews for Tom's Hardware, so... It's just like, I, uh, like, and I think there's some other review sites that do decent, that do a decent job of doing PSU reviews, but it's just like, if I can't find a review, I will act like the PSU doesn't exist because I don't know if it's good or bad. Sure. It has a 80 plus rating, but an 80 plus rating, unfortunately, doesn't actually tell you much about the internal build quality of the PSU or its ability to regulate output voltage. So it's just like, Nah, I'm not paying extra if I don't know like if the PSU is good or not. So that's how this one ended up in here. So yeah, th this is kind of what I would go for, right? And as you can clearly see, um, the motherboard in this this configuration, because this is very much supposed to be like a thou sub thousand dollar just gaming build. Um, the mo motherboard here is actually really cheap, and I guess that might surprise some people because I'm obviously a big fan of very expensive motherboards. But the thing is. 
if you know what you're doing, you don't need an expensive motherboard, right? Maybe you, like, if you want, if you don't care about having many, uh, a lot of USB ports, you can actually downgrade this motherboard down to, like, you can save 10 bucks and get an even cheaper motherboard. Now, I don't see the point of doing that because sacrificing a bunch of USB ports for $10 cheaper, for, for getting a $10 cheaper motherboard doesn't really make a ton of sense, in my opinion. But you could do that if you're really, like, trying to downcost the, the budget as much as possible. Now... What adjustments would I make to this build if I was trying to downcost it? Well, for one thing, I would scrap the heatsink. That's like the first thing that I would throw out is throw out the heatsink. Um, and if that doesn't make it cheap enough, the next thing I would throw out is the CPU and replace that with a 2600. Um, where is it? There. Yeah, 133. So there, we, we save a bunch of money on the CPU. So now we're under $900. Now, if we want to make it even cheaper... At uh, this point, you run into like, okay, maybe you can downgrade the hard drive. Uh, 500 gig SSDs uh, go for about $50, so you could save some money there. I don't see a lot of point saving money on the memory kit, because if you go for an 8 gig, like 8 gigs of RAM is like the bare minimum for a game. Like, honestly, I would not be comfortable with 8 gigs of RAM in, in my daily system at this point. So I would not run that. Um, and the thing is, in the 16 gigabyte memory kit category you don't really save much money going with like cheaper kits, right? So if we go, um, we go for two by eight configurations and we have to run two by eight because one by 16 is bad for performance because it's single channel. So if we go for the lowest price thing, right? Like, well, yeah, but that's 2,400 and it's probably not going to overclock very well. So I would just avoid that. This is 3000 and this, yeah, but that's the thing is like you save $10, right? Like you down, like you get a significant, well, potentially a very, I don't know what memory chips this uses and it's like, okay, so you save $10 and this might never, and this might overclock like absolute garbage um, or like literally won't do anything higher than 3000 megahertz, right? And that that's possibly true of any kit in this range. And at that point, it's just like, well, is, is it really worth saving ten dollars to just completely sacrifice memory like your, your memory because the other thing is you can keep the memory kit over time right like in the future you can easily upgrade the cpu um you know maybe 3600 goes really cheap second hand in my opinion second hand cpus are like one of the safest purchases you can make because cpus don't like they can can degrade but generally it's like the cpus that you find second hand don't tend to be in as bad condition as like well, memory kits also is like secondhand memory, secondhand CPUs, pretty safe in my opinion. Secondhand GPUs, not so much because they're just more complex. Secondhand motherboards is just like, eh. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, and, and a secondhand CPU is like, in my opinion, like, you know, you can eventually 3600, like I would totally upgrade to a secondhand 3600 eventually um, with, with a build like this. And then it's nice to just already have a memory kit that's good. So I don't see the point in trying to shave, you know, $10, $20 on the memory kit when you're going to get a significantly worse memory kit for that. Now on the motherboard end, uh, I don't actually see a problem with dropping down a motherboard tier because if you don't care about the USB ports, um, yeah, you, you can just go for $85 for like this thing. And this is a solid motherboard. It still has BIOS flashback. It has a proper VRM heatsink. Uh, yeah, you lose your dim slots, but you know, I, I'm going to assume that you're probably not going to be upgrading to 32 gigs of RAM anytime soon, if ever. So that's kind of like, yeah, th this this makes sense to me um, if you can get it for the $85, right? And at this point, I would just start shaving off the GPU because at, at this point, the GPU is by far the most expensive part of the entire build. And that means that you can save the most money by downgrading the GPU, right? Because that's where you're going to see the biggest differences. And in that range, let's see, what could you go for? Actually, you can get a 1660 Ti for, for 250. Wait, isn't there like a... Oh, there's some crazy promo. And a $20, yeah, we're not doing rebates. Those checked off? No, no, they're not. Interesting. Actually, can't you overclock 1660s to match 1660 Ti's? 
I'm pretty sure you can. Oh, whoa, why are there so many promos on these? <laughs> Even then you could go for something like this. Actually, let's see. 166, yeah, 1660. So you can probably overclock the 1660 to just about match the 1660 Ti. And yeah, that's a pretty big drop from like the 5700, but that that's the thing is just like the, it's the most expensive part of the entire build here. Um what else is there? I guess there's Vega 56s which are uh, yeah, they're slightly faster, aren't they? And the thing is, with the Vega 56, well, as long as it's at stock, it shouldn't do too much to the PSU. Oh, but that's for 269. Well, you could go with that, couldn't you? And then, then it's sub $800, and obviously you can just keep downgrading the GPU, maybe sacrifice the hard drive. You could throw out the case, right? Like, if you don't mind running the system on top of its, like, motherboard box for a while, you could totally throw out the case, in my opinion. That That's, that's a sacrifice I'd be willing to make any day of the week. Um, because, well, I, I, I guess if you have pets or something, then, you know, that doesn't work. But for me, like, I would totally throw the case out. <laughs> that would be a sacrifice that... Who cares? We'll, we'll just run it off the edge of my desk. Cases are, are, are uh, you know, s steel boxes are a waste of money. Um, they don't actually contribute to the overall performance of the system whatsoever. Um, well, unless you buy like a... Well, no, at, wor at, at worst, they are detrimental if you buy a case that's like really bad airflow, right? So, um, yeah. And yeah, at, you, at this point, you could probably save some money on the power supply. The thing is, once you get below like $50 on PSUs, they start being like really awful. Um, and it's just like, yeah, I wouldn't go below that. And this is already only 70 so you could only save like another $20 on the PSU maybe. So yeah, that, that's kind of the thing. At this point, like you could go from the, the Vega, you could drop down to like a RX 5700 at this point maybe. Because that's really cheap um at this point and that would probably get you into the 600 hundred dollar range i think let's see yeah sub eh, sub 200 dollar gpus yeah 5700 oh you can even get a sapphire pulse version wait oh it's a four gig wait there's a 580 oh now the the tier list is broken. Okay. Um 4 gig, no. 8 gig. Apparently these have VRAM temperature issues. It's not a mining card. It still has display outputs. <laughs> so. And it's cheap. I, I wouldn't have much confidence overclocking this thing. But it's still a 580. And like if you. Yeah, I actually. Yeah, totally. It's cheap enough. Bam. And now we're. Yeah, sub 700. And I guess you can just keep dropping down and down and down. Because the thing is, I don't think you can really get cheap, much cheaper CPUs than the, the 2600. I guess there's the 1600. Yeah. That, that's an option. So that's kind of that. That's that's kind of like, you know, if, if I was doing a budget gaming build, this is the kind of selections I would go for. Is just like, if you're at $1,000, 5700, and then focus on like, maxing out the cpu as much as possible because the thing is is like you know like it doesn't really make a lot of sense to go for something like it like a 9600k because it just like it doesn't have hyper threading it doesn't have a lot of threads a 9700k would make sense but those are expensive so that's kind of the thing is just like b450 motherboard um six core with hyper threat with uh multi-threading 
that kit of memory, like, honestly, un unless you're really scraping the bottom of the, like, unless you have a really, really tight budget, I would just use this memory kit for everything. Um, then in the storage department, I guess you could go for, like, a smaller SSD for, for a lower price. Uh, or maybe even a one terabyte hard drive for $50 if you don't mind, you know, everything being kind of slow at that point. Um, then the GPU, again, you, you can downgrade that a bit. But I think 5700s should also, like, this is one thing that I'm kind of annoyed about is, like, I'm pretty sure you can make a 5700 for, uh, like, 4 or 8 gig match a 50, uh, 580 for performance um, at stock. Like, if you overclock the 5700 quite hard. So... Yeah, there, there's kind of lots of options in that department. Oh, go. Oh. Yeah, so we have a like, uh, okay, well, that's kind of overpriced in my opinion. Oh, you can get a gaming X version. Armor. That's an 8 gig? Really? Man, the, the price <laughs> prices don't really match up that well with for these. Um, this option, that's 150. Whoa, that's cheap. That's actually like that's actually got a decent heatsink on it. Okay, well, I'd go for this. Bam. And, you know, I, I guess at this point you have to shave the memory kit or the SSD. I'd go for storage. I would shave off the SSD. Because <laughs> you can always add more storage, right? Like, that's that, that's the thing. You, you can add storage quite easily. I feel like changing memory kits is probably the most obnoxious thing because if you go, you can't add, like you can't buy a bad memory kit and then add a good memory kit to it. Whereas you can just buy a smaller SSD and then buy another one later down the line. So yeah, that's kind of the logic for, for that. Um, and I guess actually we could just down cost the PSU at this point a bit. So yeah, that, that's kind of how I, I would do sort of budget PC builds. And then for like, overkill builds well i don't know like if you think this kind of video makes sense for me to do then i guess i could do like a silly intel gaming build thing where <laughs> we tried to do like a, a similar idea as this it's just like you know if, if we look at this chart right here it's just like 3600 and then you ignore everything in between the 3600 up until like the 9700k and then you buy an, like 9700k 9900k are the only like reasonable gaming CPUs in my opinion because something like a 3900x like yes it can play games but it's w like it doesn't play games as well as the next $500 CPU does and I really really doubt you're ever gonna need 24 threads even in the next like three or four years right so I don't really see a point in getting a freaking 12 core right now um for gaming so yeah it's kind of that. That, that. This this is how I would throw to together sort of like gaming, like budget gaming builds is just like, um, go with B, like just Ryzen B450 motherboard from MSI. Um, this kit of memory, very specifically this kit of memory because it's so damn overclockable. Uh, some kind of SSD storage. And then just, you know, like upgrade the GPU until your budget is like uh, like just keep upgrading the GPU because that's kind of the crazy thing right now is like CPUs have just gotten like I feel like we, we've had such a massive jump in CPUs that you don't need a ridiculously expensive CPU to power even like high-end GPUs right especially also like the thing to consider is like this is 1080p so this is relatively high FPS gaming, which puts more strain on the CPU. If you were at like 1440p or 4K, you could probably get away with like a Ryzen 5 3600, even with a 2080 Ti. Actually, you can totally do that already at 1080p, as you could kind of see right here. But it's just like, um, yeah, you, you could push that further, I think. Um, like at 4K, it wouldn't be as much of a difference. So, yeah.
Um, hopefully this was somewhat interesting. If it wasn't and you think this is stupid, you, you tell me and I, I never make a video like this again. But if you don't think this is stupid and you, you know, want me to do more, like, theory crafting uh, system builds, then um, I can definitely do that. Don't expect me to ever actually assemble anything that I make a PC part picker list of because I don't do game, like, I don't bench games. I don't really have a big game library, so I'm not going to start benchmarking games anytime soon. Um, and I don't really see, well, I guess it would be kind of interesting to maybe throw together a build and then like overclock it and show how it overclocks. But, um, the thing is, is, uh, well, that would never, like, that would never be cost effective to do for me unless I could also sell the build at like cost to, per, uh, like at least at cost to purchase. So yeah, um, Anyway, that's kind of that for the video. So I guess thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I do have a Patreon. And, uh, well, you know, that's if you want to support me directly. And that's there's a link to that down in the description below. And if you'd like to buy some AHOC themed merch that also like uh, supports the channel quite significantly, I actually get a pretty big cut on everything that gets sold. Uh, through Teespring. There's a Teespring link uh, down in the description below as well. And there's like stickers, posters, t-shirts, all kinds of things. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to check that out, that would be awesome as well. So that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.